Hello my friends, welcome back to today's video. As usual, I am very happy to have you here because we're going to be discussing a fantastic literary masterpiece and I can't wait to have you join me. So why don't you grab yourself something cool to drink on this hot summer day and let's get started talking about Pride and Prejudice. Cheers! All right, well, I am thrilled to be talking about this book with you today. This is my first time having read Pride and Prejudice all the way through, and I loved it. Maybe it's just because I'm such a novice when it comes to literature, but I find Jane Austen to be brilliant when it comes to understanding the human condition and the temptations of a fallen world and some of the propensities of people throughout history. I will say, first of all, the tension between Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth is palpable from the moment they meet. So I was ready to find Elizabeth to be a little bit insufferable in some ways, just because she's so forthright. But in the end, I absolutely absolutely fell in love with the character of Elizabeth and who Jane Austen made her to be. I will say in this book my favorite, favorite person of all time was Jane. I really connected with her character, her gentleness, her willingness to believe the best about everybody. In fact, there's a section in here where Mr. Bennett is talking about the marriage between Jane and Mr. Bingley and how because they were both so kind and believed the best about people together that in their union they would be taken advantage of even though it's not necessarily a virtue, we obviously want wisdom and discernment, their kindness and their believing the best about people was really attractive. And so her character was one that I felt the closest connection to. Perhaps it's because I long to really believe the best about others myself. And I think when we're reading, we attach ourselves to those characters that we want to be like most. That's what I do anyway. But that being said, Elizabeth really had these all-star characteristics about her that inspired me. The truth is, she wasn't going to say yes to something just because maybe it was convenient. For instance, when Mr. Collins wanted to marry her, she was absolutely adamant that it wasn't going to happen. And here's another thing. In those times when women could not inherit property, you can kind of understand why a woman might marry out of convenience. There might not have been affection, there might not have been love, but so that they didn't become destitute, a marriage would make sense, right? Well, I found it interesting that Elizabeth's character was so strong and so committed to the truth about herself and so committed to not doing things under pretense that she refused a marriage that could have very likely secured her future financial security. Although it's very clear that Mr. Collins is a complete buffoon and she would have been miserable. Another thing that I really enjoyed about this book is the description of Lydia and her elopement, for lack of a better word, disappearance rather, with Mr. Wickham. Lydia is your absolute perfect picture of an unwise teenage girl. I mean, she really did not have discernment at all. She was giggly, she talked too much, she was condescending, and the fact that she was willing to abandon her family, be dishonest in the process, and go away with a man like Wickham really showed her character. In fact, I think this part would be really fitting for young girls to read, to kind of understand who they don't want to be. As women, we want wisdom. You know, we want discretion. We want discernment. And that is something that Lydia was completely lacking. Another part of this book that really struck me was Mr. Bennett's lack of leadership. On one end, you can see how living with a wife like Mrs. Bennett would have made anybody completely exhausted. And he was either just selfish or tired of fighting, quite frankly. It was disappointing to me that he didn't step up more and protect his family. And I feel like the movie captures that pretty well too. The part where he basically says he'll never forgive Elizabeth if she does marry Mr. Collins was beautiful. It was like the first time you actually see him step up and take ownership of his family at the risk of being mauled by Mrs. Bennett. But on the whole, he wasn't a great leader of their family and it was disappointing. But again, having a wife like Mrs. Bennett, she's hilarious and exhausting at the same time. So you can see why Mr. Bennett's character kind of pulls back and doesn't lead in that case. This book really drove home to me how much women at the time really weren't protected. You know, if you came from a family of all girls and your parents died, the only way to secure property is through marriage. And probably oftentimes those marriages not being happy ones. 
So I found that really interesting. We live in such different times right now. Obviously the pendulum has swung so far the other way where male leadership is severely unheralded. But this was the other extreme where a woman couldn't even own property on her own. So that was interesting. I kind of for a minute put myself inside that world and thought, wow, that would be a really tough place to be in. No wonder Mrs. Bennett was trying to get all her daughters married off. Hence her being so happy that Lydia went off with Mr. Wickham. I also found it interesting that Mr. Darcy really is the epitome of a kinsman redeemer in some sorts. He comes in and rescues the situation between Wickham and Lydia, but he also puts his hand in the business of Mr. Bingley and Jane and convinces Mr. Bingley that Jane isn't interested. In fact, I've underlined one section. This is a conversation between Mr. Darcy and Elizabeth. In reference to Jane's affection to Mr. Bingley, Darcy says, but I shall not scruple to assert that the sincerity of your sister's countenance and air was such as might have given the most acute observer a conviction that, however amiable her temper, her heart was not likely to be easily touched. I wrote down in the margin that was a complete incorrect observation of Jane. She was just shy and was head over heels for Mr. Bingley, quite frankly. And, you know, it just kind of goes to show when you meddle in other people's affairs, though I really do think Darcy meant well and was trying to protect his friend, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. And I think that's very common in that age range when people are unmarried and they're kind of all trying to match make and figure things out, it's a good reminder to be really careful because you could end up really destroying someone's happiness and a future relationship. Really, in reading this book, it's made me think that nothing has changed, really. Even though times and seasons and clothes and customs change, the heart of man is the same generation after generation. We struggle with meddling in people's affairs, leadership, pride, prejudice, the complexities of human relationships really are just summed up in this book. If you haven't read it, I would recommend you read it soon. It is such a pleasurable read. I could see this being one that I would come back to time and time again because it's just so enjoyable. Some of the book I read just physically and then other times when I had to be up doing things, I would listen to it. But these folks became my friends. I did put this book down for a little bit because I had other things to read. So I started it, I want to say, in January maybe, and then I put it down in March, and then I picked it back up again, and then have just recently finished it. I don't intend for the next books I read to take that long, but I had a lot of other things going on and so wasn't able to pick it back up. But when I did pick it back up, it was like, oh, I'm back. It was good to pick it back up and get back into the storyline. So that is it, my friends. That is my review of Pride and Prejudice. I highly recommend this book if you haven't read it yet. It's a great read. It's really easy to go through. It's very enjoyable. If you've seen the movie, that's a great start. However, there are more things in the book naturally that are not in the movie. But I think you'll really find this to be a fabulous read this summer. So if you are looking for something good to read to keep you entertained and something very enjoyable, I recommend Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I would love to hear what books you are reading this summer. I will say, I just started Frankenstein not too long ago and I'm already on chapter 10 and I love it. What a fabulous book. I'm finding myself really enjoying the classics and even though I started late, I really believe that there is no better time than now to get started. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video and I look forward very much to seeing you in the next one. Goodbye for now.